Hello, I'm drinking King Su for the first time in a while. Toppling Goliath's double IPA used to be one of the highest rated, most highly sought after double IPAs. Now you can just find it in most grocery stores. Um, probably not across the entire country, but a lot of the eastern, midwestern and eastern part of the country. Uh, it's 7.8%, I believe. Yep. Only Citra Hops. <clears throat> And so at some places it's not too expensive. I got this for $18. Yeah, I think it was $18. And I got it because it's fresh. Um, less than a month old. Today is September 3rd. So well under a month in the can. And the grocery store where I got this from, they don't um, refrigerate everything, but they keep it pretty darn cold and it's sitting right across the aisle from the fridge. So, even though it's summertime, I don't think this will be skunked and I'm getting some good smells. So I kind of have stopped buying a lot of Toppling Goliath because their beers are usually very Trillium-esque. Throat burn, not a very good head. The feel's a little bitey. Hmm, that's kind of dark, actually. Hopefully it's not oxidized. Um, and since they just are shipped everywhere, they just kind of sit around. Yeah, you don't see them super fresh. And some of the varieties that I really like, like one-off four-pack IPAs, you don't see anymore. Um, like Zealander. Um, they did do like a an IPA variety pack, but by the time I, I found that or got shipped here, it wasn't very fresh. Um, but that's smelling good. I think the, I probably only have one video review of this, and that's back years ago when I got a bomber of this. <clears throat> so you go, head still sticking around. And my lighting might be a little too intense right now. That smells, smells pretty good. It's mango, it's creamsicle. They say, finishing, oh, this is weird. Combination of mango, orange, and pineapple flavors finishing with grapefruit aroma. The aroma's the beginning of this experience, right? And a ferocious bite. So I guess they do say a bite. But just uh, my, my favorite bright, juicy citra aroma. It smells great. Doesn't seem like there's too much yeast in the way. Yeah, when you inhale it, it's like it smells like a really fresh tropical fruit, kind of passion fruity. Yeah, that's, that's nice. I got this really cold, uh, but it's still very, very flavorful. It's really sweet citrus and truly a yeah, mango, pineapple, <clears throat> not really peachy maybe. Um, you know, very, very sweet, floral, bright orange, um, and some sort of passion fruity stuff. Maybe it's sort of one note, but it's, it's, it's nailing that citra note that I really love. And I kind of feel like you don't get it as much these days. A lot of burgers are making stuff that's more, that's really yeast forward, or they use a big combo of hops, um, or it just doesn't doesn't nail it um, in a way that reminds me of like, you know, the first Citra Hazy IPAs that I really, really loved, like regular Pseudo Sue and Four, four Points from Trillium and stuff. Has a pretty big body too, but just a few sips and it's drying out my tongue. It's even though this is mass produced, it's still very heavily hopped. It's definitely very heavy on the dry hop. Um, yeah, but that's nice. It, this is, it tastes like an $18 double IPA, even though that's like not even cheap. That, that um, it's pretty cheap actually for a super hazy, heavily hopped double IPA these days. Yeah, it's a full body sort of tongue coating, but it's not that, it's, it's not super soft. It's, it's not velvety, it's not silky. 
has a texture to it. <clears throat> this isn't as bubbly as some of their other IPAs that I, that was the kind of detracting thing I noticed. I think that, I think I got like a double dry hop pseudo sue that was good, and then one that was like it's kind of throat burning. Now the finish I'm noticing some booze. It's kind of like a a screwdriver type thing. It kind of finishes kind of like you have a little bit of vodka and orange juice. Not that boozy and acidic though. This does not seem to have a lot of traditional boiled hot bitterness. It's mainly just coming from the dry hop and just <clears throat> all of the antioxidants in there. That's what polyphenols are. Polyphenols and protein. Some of the main things that contribute to this haze and polyphenols are <clears throat> very tannic kind of bitter compounds and you want some of them because they have great flavor and aroma and they're antioxidants i guess they're good for you no one talks about that <laughs> um <clears throat> but then they can contribute to that that kind of chalkiness there's definitely some chalkiness going on yeah i would say get this nice and cold um because I can see how this, by the end of it, if it gets warm, it might be a little too much just like vodka and fruit juice. But it's delicious fruitiness. Um, and not really evolving much. And the flavor, it's getting, it's spicier. It's not quite incense -y, just spicier, a little earthier in the flavor. I don't know about dankness, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a clean, generic kind of dankness. It's not real sticky, icky, resinous. Just a, a generic, clean, resiny type thing. And actually, the head's sticking around pretty well. There is, yeah, now I'm finally getting some burn in the throat, but I feel like the, the, the feel is, is, and carb is better than other Toppling Glass IPAs I've had over the past few years. Maybe I'll... Go buy some more of their ones. See if, see if they figured out how to, um, <clears throat> you know, do the huge amount of production but make a consistent good product. And I don't think, like it generating that head again. It makes it seem like it might be too carved, but I don't think it is. But whatever. This this is good. Um, I give honestly, this is like a four point four beer. That's. If you see this fresh, I, I would recommend it, especially if you haven't tried it. Um, it is surprisingly good. <clears throat>